For those of you who um, have come, been coming the last five weeks, um, I am the lead pastor here. Um, <laughs> And uh, I haven't spoken, but uh, we've had some powerful speakers, and it's great to be back to deliver um, our last Sunday um, message of the year here at Bethel. And so uh, hopefully it'll be a good one. Uh, we're going to continue our series, Awe and Wonder. And uh, man, I'll tell you, I, that can definitely describe this year for me. I am in awe and wonder of it in that it has been for sure the hardest year of my life, uh, most challenging year of my life, <clears throat> most painful year of my life, and um, yet God is so good. I'm walking, hallelujah. Um, and in fact, uh, I'm in awe of wonder. This, uh, this past week, I went golfing for the first time since my back injury back in, in surgery back in March. And uh, the awe and wonder is uh, I only, I, I broke 90. I broke 90 for my first time out. So, and uh, come on, that's an awe and wonder. Give glory to God. Um, so, um, but uh, we're going to, we're going to continue in our series. But before we do, I want to, I want to celebrate God and what he's doing and um, yes. church that he's continuing to use us to make an impact in our city and um, in this world. And so this past Tuesday, we had the opportunity to be at this council, city council meeting at the uh, at Gilbert City Council meeting where they made a proclamation and I want to read to you that proclamation. In fact, they gave me the proclamation. They gave it to us, um, making anti-sex uh, trafficking, um, the month of January will be anti-sex uh, trafficking month. So, but let me just read it to you because words are powerful. Whereas human trafficking is a global plague that impacts millions of people each year, including tens of thousands of Americans, whereas the United States ranks as one of the worst countries globally for human trafficking, whereas Arizona ranks in the top 15 states with the highest rates of human trafficking per capita, whereas human trafficking impacts people across all demographics, ages, including teenagers and children, whereas the battle against human trafficking includes supporting efforts in schools, churches, nonprofits, law enforcement, businesses to prevent human trafficking, intervene, disrupt, and dismantle human trafficking syndicates, provide resources to and support for victims of human trafficking, whereas the town of Gilbert joins schools, churches, nonprofits, law enforcement, federal and state coalitions, and the notinourcity.org movement in our commitment to increase public awareness of human trafficking epidemic that impacts our community, state, nation, and world. Now, therefore, I, Bridget Peterson, mayor of the town of Gilbert, do hereby proclaim the month of January 2023 as Anti-Human Trafficking Month in Gilbert, Arizona, and urge residents, churches, schools to work together to eliminate trafficking from our community and support efforts of frontline line organizations, law enforcement, in their battle against human trafficking, and to take a stand and say, not in our city. So the city of Chandler has it on the books in January. They're going to be doing the same proclamation as well. Mesa has committed in the month of January. And uh, we're believing that many other cities in the valley will uh, uh, jump on board and make this proclamation that we hope to take around the world to every city. Um, amen. Amen? amen? And so that's what we're doing. That's what's happening, what God is doing we're just going to snuff out that evil, that darkness is going to be driven out by his light. Amen? Amen. So, all in wonder of what God is doing in just five years, what he's doing in the battle and the efforts and joining together. We're believing for over 100 churches to join with us at Gamage Auditorium, February 10th, 
two, two nights before the Super Bowl. This week I talked to some former NFL football players and we have them on board. Uh, there'll be uh, current NFL football players and former. They're going to be joining us that night as, lo- as well as elected officials and, um, and frontline ministries. So it's going to be an amazing event. Go to notinourcity.org. Get your tickets. They're free, but there's limited seats. There's only 3,000 seats there in Gamage, and we want to see you there. So please do it. Go there. Take the pledge. Do yourself. Take the pledge. Not in, not in, in our city. Amen? All right. So today, as our uh, wrapping up of our awe and wonder and our last Sunday morning together, Uh, I've entitled the message, um, Say Something. Say Something. And um, I'm going to do my best to unpack that. And uh, it's important what you say. Not everything you should say, but there's something you're supposed to say. You're supposed to say to yourself and you're supposed to say to others. And so we're going to unpack that. But if you would, would you uh, stand Uh, With me, as my wife reads our passage, our our Christmas passage in Luke chapter 1. So the reading of the word, we stand together. Luke 1, starting in verse 5. In the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah, who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless, because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. When the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then the angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He's never to take wine or or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Verse 18, Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering why he stayed so long in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They realized he'd seen a vision in the temple, for he kept making signs to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was completed, he returned home. After this, his wife Elizabeth became pregnant and for five months remained in seclusion. The Lord has done this for me, she said. In these days, he has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace among the people. Let's pray. Father. I'm in awe and wonder of you that 2,000 years ago you sent your only begotten son as a gift for the world, a gift for all of humanity to believe in. And I'm in awe and wonder of that still today, that you love me 
that you love us that much, that you are desiring for none to perish but all to come to know you. God, let us grasp the awe and wonder of that message, what it means, what it represents, God, and that we have an amazing opportunity and responsibility to share the awe and wonder of that message and live in such a way that we continually find an awe and wonder of you and your word and your love. Holy Spirit, open our eyes and our ears today to see, to hear, and to be in awe of the creator in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Woo, say something, but not the wrong thing. Several weeks ago, the last time I spoke, I talked about the importance of thoughts. And man, I, I hope that I get to do a series in 2023 on um, thoughts and how to think right. Um, there's a whole lot more I've been learning and a whole lot more I believe God wants us to understand about the power of, of thoughts, Okay. And so I hope to be able to do that. But let's, let's enter this story. Let's try to enter into the story and maybe even pretend or imagine that you're Zechariah. You're a priest, been called to the priesthood. You're one of 14,000 priests in Israel. And... 14 of those 14,000 every year got chosen to go into the Holy of Holies, to go and, and, and minister to the Lord. 14. So this is a big deal, to be chosen. Now, God chose through the casting of lots who got to go. He was there with his other colleagues serving, and then there was the moment that they're going to choose who's going to go, and they cast lots, and it falls on Zechariah. He gets chosen to go. This is a big deal, okay? Almost like winning the lottery, okay? You've been chosen to go into this place. Now, it is an awe and wonder moment. It is an, uh, it is an awe and wonder and Will I die when I go in? Okay. Um, and uh, there he was to go in there. And, you know, in that moment, you, dev- you definitely, Pastor Tim, double checked if you had confessed all your sins, okay, before going in. And, uh, and so he's chosen. He's gone all in and it's going well. He's not dropped dead, okay. And all of a sudden, suddenly, it just gets better. An angel of the Lord, and not just an angel, the angel, Gabriel, one of the archangels, is there. And then he, and, and the good news is this, he's not there to kill you, so he says, fear not, okay, don't be afraid. But I got good news, I got good news. God has heard your prayer. You're going to have a son. And you're not going to just have any ordinary son. Your son is going to prepare the way for my son, Jesus. Now, this is awe and wonder. This is awe and wonder. And let me tell you, church, God has some awe and wonder for you in 2023. Amen. But don't sabotage. God, by the way you talk. Watch what you say. Now, Zachariah, after many years of trying and praying and not getting pregnant, you think maybe even came to the conclusion that this was just his lot. And he faithfully continued to serve. And maybe even prayed. We don't know. The last time he prayed to be pregnant, maybe he gave up on praying. But here's what's amazing about God. Okay? 
God is not subject to our time and our timetable. God hears our prayers. And here's what's also pretty amazing about God is that your prayers don't get answered because of your faithfulness. It's not even because of your faith. Now, faith is important, no doubt, to see the fulfillment of prayers. But a a prayer heard and responded to is not conditional on your faithfulness or your faith. Or guess what? Zachariah wouldn't have qualified. He would have just failed in his response to the answer of prayer. The answer of prayer, here it is. You're, you're gonna, God's going to give this to you. And it's not going to, he's going to blow, God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond He's not only going to give you a son, but your son is going to be the greatest man ever born other than Jesus. To that point, to that moment. And Jesus said that about John. No one born of woman is greater than John the Baptist up to that point. But then guess what he said, Jesus said about us. Us who believe and have been born again, He said, we will be greater than him. In fact, the least of you in the kingdom are greater than John the Baptist. Believe that. Start talking differently, believing that you too, like John, can be a mouthpiece. John the Baptist was a mouthpiece to prepare the way Let me tell you, the way you speak, you're preparing the way for 2023, church. How you speak. So I am calling the church. I'm calling all of us for the remaining two weeks of this year to a fast. This is not a free will. (laughs) Call. This is... A mandatory call to all of us to fast. Yeah, I know, your pantries are full and the menus have been made. But this is so much more important than eating. So I'm calling us to fast from negative thinking. Why? Because negative thinking produces negative speaking. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So I'm calling us to fast from negativity for the remaining two weeks of this year. Are you in? Are you in? Come on. Why is it so important to not be negative? Because negative words are four to seven times more powerful than positive ones. A negative word, a negative thought is four to seven times more powerful than a positive one. Which means this, for every negative thought you have, you need four to seven positive thoughts to just equal out that negative one, to get you back to neutral. And sometimes you gotta get yourself to neutral before you can get yourself positive. In fact, let me encourage you. This is why so many of you have discredited or written off positive thinkers, you know, and and, and positive thinking, which I promise you, positive thinking is way better than negative thinking. But you can't just jump from negative thinking to positive. It's just, it's fake, it's, it's unreal, and it's sometimes it's just ir- it's irresponsible. It's not right. It's not right to just go, oh, I'm gonna think positive that, you know, you know my, somebody just died, right? I mean, no, it's not, oh, I'm gonna be, no, it's just not reframing that, as we're going to see. There are moments you need to weep it, you need to cry it, you need to just lament it. And it's not just positive thinking that, you know, you just spin you out of it. No, no, this stinks. This is hard. And let me tell you, there were so many of those moments this year for me. 
And the one who loves spinning everything positive, there was a moment, there was just no way to spin this. Except, God, this is horrible. This is painful. So, weep, cry, lament when it's appropriate. But there are certain things that are just not appropriate to lament over, okay? So you got a flat tire on the way here. I mean, come on, that's not a lamenting moment. Like, you didn't crash the car, okay? You got a spare. You have a car, okay? That's not lament worthy, okay? (laughs) But when something is lamented, don't try to spin it. But get yourself back to neutral. Back to neutral so that you can enter into the positive, into right thinking. The Apostle Paul commands us to think on what is right and lovely and pure and good. This is what we're to think about. But here's the deal. If you have negative thoughts, it's hard to just think positive. Like, how do you, how do, you do it? I mean, here's Zechariah. He's, he's the priest. Positive things are happening. You were chosen. You won the lottery. You get to go in. I mean, come on. That should produce some positive vibes, right? I mean, positive thoughts. He's in there. All of a sudden, the angel comes, and, and you find out the angel's not there to kill you. More positive thoughts. Oh, I'm not going to die. And then more positive thoughts, right? You're going to have a son. God's heard your prayer. Come on. <laughs> yes, it's a great day. It's getting great greater on wonder on wonder and then all of a sudden negativity kicks in but we're old dude like huh? how are we gonna huh Zachariah I'm gonna have to help you you're not gonna speak for over nine months because words and thoughts are powerful. Your life is heading in the direction of your most powerful, most thought about thoughts. Whether positive or negative, your life is heading in that direction. And a negative thought is four to seven times more powerful than a positive thought. Even after all this positive things that happened to Zachariah, the years of negativity, the years of we're not pregnant again, the years of disappointment led to, yeah, but... Like, how we, how is it going to happen? I mean, like, like, how am I supposed to even chase this little whippersnapper around? I'm like, <laughs> you know, whatever it is, whatever you got to take that captive because when you speak a thought, that thought becomes 10 times more powerful than just a thought has. So what does that mean for negative thoughts? Especially, do not speak negativity. Because you've just taken four to seven times more powerful than positive thoughts. You've just multiplied that to 40 to 70 times. So you speak a negative thought. Now it takes you 70 positive thoughts to get back to neutral. Now, if you speak the positive thought, it only takes four to seven times. Zachariah, shut your mouth. God loves you so much and he loves the world so much, we cannot have you sabotage what God has begun. How many things, church, are we sabotaging in our lives that God has begun 
but because of the way we speak, we're delaying what he wants to do now. I don't know. But this, is, this matters. This is the story. These are the details given to us. Let's put ourselves there and go, okay, when I have an awe and wonder moment this year, how am I going to speak? What are my thoughts going to be entering into that awe and wonder moment? And not every awe and wonder moment begins with a awe and wonder. It begins with a oh wonder, right? Well, that moment needs a mind that is fixed its eyes on the Lord. The miracle working God. The one knowing that I am going into a challenge, a storm, a trial. That I'm not going into this bent negative, which, oh, we're going to die. But rather, whoa, God, how are you going to save me this time? Right? So... <laughs> Why, why do we know, how do we know negative words are so much more powerful? Because that's what the news is full of. And the news is a business. And people want people to watch the news, listen to the news. You know this not just on the night and news, on social media. What news travels quickest? Bad news, negative news, right? We know this to be true, and why is it true? Because our flesh wants to survive. And so, knowing that eating this berry kills people, guess what? That news got passed on. And sometimes, the bad news is important to know the good news. Sometimes you actually got to know before you can become a Christian what the bad news is. So there is a place for bad news. But you're not to focus and live with that news. It's to be heard, processed, shelved, and moved on with. Not one to feed. You, there's no need to feed yourself bad news. There's plenty of bad news going to be available in your life without searching for it. Right? And yet, I have, and I even found myself in this last election cycle watching the news more than I normally do, and it's affecting me. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verse 5 says this. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Church, we have incredible power to influence our lives. And it's called our thoughts. And here's the amazing news, is God didn't just leave us alone to do it. He's come to help us. The Holy Spirit, I believe his primary job, other than convicting the world of sin is, is to give us good news, to lead us to good news. He's the encourager, okay? Does bad news encourage you? Only if it's to get you to turn 
from a direction that you're heading in with that bad news. Would you agree? But even in that process, he's like, no, no, don't go that way. Turn this way. This is the abundant life. This is the life that is to the full that I have for you. So my plan today is first that, you're, that you would understand your negativity is not only hurting you, but it's hurting your spouse, is hurting your children, is hurting your coworkers, is hurting your neighborhood, is hurting this church. It's hurting you. And, and we gotta recognize this. We gotta recognize negative thoughts are hurting us. And, and I'm not calling us to, to put our head in the sand. There's, there's, there's plenty of problems, and we're called to solve those problems. We're called to take on that negativity, but with, with a, an attitude and a heart of, I'm more than a conqueror. Negativity, you will bow to positivity. Okay, you will be snuffed out. And it matters because negativity is four to seven times stronger. And for sure, okay, maybe I can't get you to stop thinking negative. Let's just begin by do not open your mouth. Yeah, that was bad. That was hard. But do not be speaking that. Do, if you, and again, I'm not, what I'm not saying is there are moments you need to lament it. You got to get it out. Okay, you, you get it out to God. Okay, you get it out to a, 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 another brother that will help absorb that so that you can move forward, but not so you can feel better. Okay, and, and in fact, others, that's because it won't. It'll last for a moment. And then it just gets built, built back up. And then you just vomit again. Okay. I'm telling you, I mean, this is so important, church, to, to this, this coming year. And, and, and how do you overcome it? How do you overcome the negative words? You got to speak it. But before we do, let me tell you this story I, I read this, this past month about the power of thoughts again and why it's so important of how you think and what you believe. So there was a gentleman many years ago, he took the SAT test. He was a C minus student, single mom, you know, led him to taking the test. So he goes, takes the SAT test. A few weeks later, he gets in the, the mail, the, the results. Mom opens up the, the, uh, the card and it says he scored a 1460 out of 1600. Like, Smart, like this is really good, right? And the mom goes, "Did you cheat?" <laughs> like, like she knew her son, like, right? It's like C minus student. Okay, she. He goes, "No, mom, I tried to cheat, <laughs> but I couldn't. It was too hard." So he thinks he got a, a sixteen or fourteen eighty. So now, what did he think? I'm smart. I'm not dumb. I'm a smart person. So what does he do? He starts doing his homework. He starts getting good grades on his tests. And guess what the teachers do? They start treating him like a good student. And he decides, I can't be messing around with you in the back of the class who pay no attention. I'm a smart person. You're dumb, not me. Okay, he goes on, and his grades didn't get turned around in time for him to go to a major university. We went to community college, and from community college, he went to a major university, and then he went to grad school at Harvard. Then he opens a business, becomes a very successful businessman, becomes one of the top postmasters, which is a speaking um, uh, organization, married, successful, home, only to get a letter from the SAT organization many years later stating they had made a mistake on 13 exams that year. 
and that his score wasn't a 1480. It was a 760. (laughs) What's the point? It wasn't that test score that decided his future. It was what he thought about the test score that decided his future. So here's the deal, church. Your past can be an indicator of your future. But it doesn't have to be. But if you don't change the way you think, the way you believe, and the way you speak, I'm sorry, your past will determine your future. So what do you do? How do you take a bad day that you can find no positivity in, no way of spinning this? How do you change it? How do you go from all the negative thoughts to neutral and then back into the positive? Well, let me let you in on a very challenging day for David. 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 3. When David and his men reached Ziglag, they found it destroyed by fire and their wives and sons and daughters taken captive. So while David was out fighting and leading the, the, the army out, fighting the enemy, he comes back to find his wife and children and all their stuff gone. This isn't a positive thinking seminar moment. There is no way to spin this other than this is horrible. And so what does David do? So David and his men wept aloud until they had no strength left to weep. Lament. Lament. Now, Watch how David's day goes from from bad to worse. David, verse 6, was greatly distressed because the men were talking of stoning him. Each one was bitter in spirit because his sons and daughters. But David found strength in the Lord, his God. But David found strength in the Lord. David strengthened himself in the Lord. How do you do that? How do you strengthen yourself in the Lord? Because that's what you need in these moments where it's just bad. It's just you're laying on your bed and your legs don't work bad in pain. Not even able to get up to use the restroom bad. What do you do? How do you get to neutral? I mean, begin there. For some, I'm not saying get positive. I'm saying get neutral. Make that your goal. I'm going to get neutral. I got to get out of negativity. I got to get out of this. Because this will only hurt me. And and this will only go deeper into a pit that I don't want to live. I got to get to neutral. So my challenge first is get to neutral. Get to neutral. How do you do it? Well, this is how David did it. Psalm 103, verse 1. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. (laughs) Praise the Lord, oh my soul. All my inmost being. Praise. (laughs) Praise his holy name. (sighs) Praise the Lord, my soul. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all my sins. Yes, God, you've forgiven my sins. My name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And heals all my diseases. Who redeems my life from the pit and crowns me with love and compassion. Who satisfies your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles to change from negative 
to positive, to at least get to neutral. David encouraged himself in the Lord. Church, it's the way. This is why we as Christians are set up to be the greatest sufferers. And the glory is not in our suffering. The glory is in God's presence as we're going through the suffering. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for his presence is with me. So we are going to have some conversations in the new year about how we think, church. And we are going to learn strategies to think better, to think the way God thinks. And we're going to develop the discipline to not ne let negativity out of our mouths because we don't want to give those negative thoughts 10 times, 10x the power in our lives. And guess what? That means when you put something on social media, that's coming out of your mouth, whether you spoke it or not. It might even be worse because what you've done now is now you've taken those words and other people are speaking them. So if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything. But who do I talk to, God? Who do I talk to, the person who's discipling me? I got to get to somebody that I know can absorb it, that I know can just be there, mourn with me, cry with me if I need it. I'll get it out of me. But it matters. Y'all, science continues to catch up on what the Bible's been teaching for years. Listen, Pastor Rice said this last week. You don't have to be your thoughts. But if you think long enough, you will become your thoughts. You have to take your thoughts captive or you will become your thoughts. You gotta find some words. You gotta know the scriptures. Let me let you in on my word for next year. You know, our church's word is greater presence. My word is renewed. As I was preparing even this message, I already had known this word for weeks. I've been praying through it, but I was like, Lord, how, okay, how do I help people? Like, how do we go from this is negative? You can't just jump into positive. It's not real. It's like you just lost the Super Bowl. Okay, like, like, be positive. No, no, just no mourn it. You lost it. Okay, there'll be a moment, right? But get to neutral. Get to neutral. Some people never get out of reverse, never get out of negativity. You got to get out of negativity before you can get into positivity. And getting out of it, just get neutral. Just get neutral. And for sure, don't open your mouth when you're negative. Because it's destructive. There's the power of life and death in the tongue. Just keep it shut. Keep your mouth shut. Because you're doing destruction. Can you hear me? It's, this is, it, it changes atmospheres. A losing team. And they're just grumbling, complaining. Momentum in games. As athletes, you know it shifts. And, and you can't get negative. You don't have time. You got you to gotta stay. Okay, we fumbled it. We're not, you know, positive about fumbling, but we're moving on. We're neutral. There's another play. There's another game, right? I mean, you got to get out of the negative. And there's moments, the word of God, I'm going to encourage myself in the Lord. I'm going to speak it. You know, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. You get a thought that you're not beautiful enough, young lady? Let me give you God's word. You are fearfully and you are wonderfully made. You take that evil thought from the pit of hell and that stupid boy and 
and you tell <laughs> you tell the boy speak to the hand <laughs> and you tell yourself I am fearfully and wonderfully made <laughs> you feel beat down the days had you you're exhausted go man there's new mercies every morning tomorrow's a new day oh I'm going to mount up with wings as eagles when I get tired and weary God can cause me to mount up with wings as eagles my God can make all things new There's lots of awe and wonder in our future church. <laughs> in many ways, I'm really excited about 2002 coming to a close. But I'm not expecting 2023 to be any easier. Oh, I'm believing it to be much different but I'm not preparing like it's going to be easier. Because my muscles are getting bigger. See, more weight is not easier. God has more weight, which means you got to get stronger. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you your amazing love your power your peace that can transcend all understanding is there anybody here that you need Jesus' help you find yourself with lots of lots of negative thoughts you struggle in this, this, this area. You find yourself struggling. You've, you've created grooves in your life and you don't want to be known as a negative person. You, and, and maybe others don't know it, but you know in your, in your, in your heart, you, you think way too much about negative things. And you, and you would say, I need Jesus to help me. I need Jesus, first of all, to say, Jesus, I'm sorry, forgive me. And then Jesus, help me think differently. If that's you, would you lift up your hand? I want to pray for you right now. Wherever you're at, I want to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you found joy going to the cross. You found joy. Your attitude was always positive. So we know you understand what it means to be tempted in every way, but yet not sin. So pray, let's pray this, church. Say, Jesus, I surrender my thoughts, my life to you. Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my King. I give you my thoughts. My thoughts. Say thoughts. Submit to Jesus. Thoughts. Obey Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for service today. Excited to have you. And remember, you matter to us and you matter to God. And because you matter to us, we want to connect with you. So please be sure to fill out a connect card and let us know how we can be praying for you this week. And we'll see you here next week.
Welcome Bethel family. We're so glad you joined us for service today. Now check out these announcements. Cha! place for prayer and you are invited throughout the week Monday through Friday this is where we have dedicated a place for prayer and seeking God crew this is the day the Lord has made let another man's lips praise you and not your own direct our paths into the good things that you have in store for us in Jesus name amen If you would like to give, we invite you to give through the Bethel app, available through your app store. Whether new to Bethel or one of our members, we want you to know that we are all about relationship. So connect with us. Press connect and let us know how you're doing. And if you need prayer, well, we can pray for you. Press pray with us and one of our ministry staff will take on your prayer request. Digitally challenged? Well, don't worry. We have gift envelopes and connect cards located in the seat back in front of you. And if you are connecting with us online, simply download the Bethel app or visit our website at www.bethelchandler.com. 